This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Better whip out those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. Give me a moment. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> You're still worried. It's very worrying. Now, what do you want from me, policeman? She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residence. I'm no one. Just an... If you can call it living. I have a little room. It's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't complain, no. I have my bed and my aching bones to keep me company. And that's all I need from this world. Ask away, policeman. No one lives there. It's been empty for months. Impossible. I would know if someone had moved in there. Maybe it's those countercultural people again. Breaking into a house like it's a public space. You're a policeman. Be good and take a look, will you? Great. Young people. They're worse than rats. You know, always littering the hallways with trinkets and empty beer cans. Oh, that one is a scientist, a future scholar. I think he studies astrology at the community college. Education's good. I always tell them to study. Something to do with all those stars around his door. He asked me to leave his drawings up on the wall. That's what I said, astrology. The lieutenant shakes his head as though to say, let it go. Come on, people. Try to keep up any standards here. It's not about stars. It's... forget it. The artiste? Nothing I can do about her, I'm afraid. She ruins the walls faster than I can clean them. Still, she leaves an old lady to her business. More than I can say for others. She mumbles some kind of a response, then hacks something into her handkerchief. Oh, you'll find plenty of Martins here. Don't you worry. Key brain. Someone played a trick on you. Martin Martinez is a name for anyone who comes from Martinez. Like Jim Jambrock or... Raoul Ravageau. Oops, you really didn't get the joke there. I thought it was obvious. Anyway, officer, we don't have the witness's name. Yes, yes, I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil, right? Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? Talk? <laughs> he lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the evening. Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home.
What happened here? It will still be accessible through the apartment next to it. That one didn't have a door. Sadly, nothing of great value remains here. Indeed. That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers, the iconography of communism, in other words. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment, to symbolize the toppling of the old order. Also, some social democrats were already using it. The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. It was about building a society that could exist because white is the color of peace. Smug superiority, aesthetic musings, the triumph of... You hear someone walking around in... The walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. You can feel tension on the other side. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Do I have to open the door? Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. It's generally easier to do things if you have literally any reason. Excuse me? Of course not. You have plenty of reason to enter. Oh, come on. That was smart. Satisfied? My name is Marielle Charpentier and I'm an agent with Martinez Realty Associates. I am not breaking in as I have every right to be here. The keys, see? Her voice is really cheerful, despite her obviously hating you. Do you want to see my ID as well? You can't legally ask for it, but why not? Want to see my residence permit too? Very well, but please make it quick. I need to be back in La Delta in an hour. I need to get it ready for the next lease, but as you can see, the previous tenant completely trashed the place. It was some kind of a moribund old man who used to be a business owner. A sudden serious look crosses her face. This story didn't have a happy ending. But that was months ago. Anyway, was there anything you want? Oh, that's another huge mess. The former tenant owes us three months of rent. Three. We close the... And again, I have no idea how stupid mistakes like this can even happen. But Ron, when he came to close the door, didn't close the neighboring door. And there's a hole in the wall. A hole in the wall. Can you believe it? And then the tenant ran off with his stuff. He's gone. The sum must have been puny. These apartments are perfectly fine. They have gorgeous architecture. I'll tell you, Martinez has a future. In a few years, it's going to blossom with artists and creative. Well, it does not disappear from my hands. No, I don't let it. Don't ask me what happened with the wall. I have no idea how we're going to find the time or resources to fix it. Both apartments are now unrentable. Both. 
Of course. Mmm, the luxury of fine things. Just look at those black monk straps. After spending an entire day hustling, who's to say that you didn't deserve a pair of ridiculously expensive shoes on your tired feet? Let's hope no one saw you wearing these outrageously expensive and ultra-liberal shoes. Ruination has come. The broken arches betray the once grand history of this building. It towered over the harbor until it happened. A great force from the northeast fired into the city. Heavy artillery shelled the coastline. Far the tenement acted as a defensive wall against the worst of the shelling until it was destroyed and they had a direct. The waves of the Martinez Inlet roll over the fallen remains of the building. The dark waters of What didn't fall into the ocean was used as scrap. What wasn't used as scrap was thrown into the ocean. Those arches acted as support for something greater than what you see now. Only three stories stand where nine to 12 once did. Restoration has failed. A fleet, the combined armies of Occident and Grad they massed airships further down in the Bay of Revachol. The artillery was so powerful, many are still there to this day. If you squint, you can just barely see the shadow on the water, far in the northeast. Cannons still ready to placate Revachol. The coalition, but that was a long time ago. He does not like talking politics of this kind. have learned how to saunter up staircases. I didn't think you could do that with hooves. But here you are. Yeah, I can see that. Cool. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. Red dyed heavy fuel oil intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. What did he think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamrock. She really did it. She's proud of it too. Oh, what? You'll push me off this ledge and pry the bucket from my dead hands?
give me a moment. I see. I hope some good people are finally going to move in. This place needs them. Oh, I do like wizards, and people like that in general. She means clairvoyance. Give me a moment. Ask away, policeman. The hell am I supposed to know? Another nut job, I assume. Some lunatic lost his mind. With how small these rooms are, wouldn't you want to break the wall down? She mumbles some kind of a response. Then... This door has been closed. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lay. Let's see if any- No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? Tomorrow, 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry. You'll get him. Remember, tomorrow. He's probably gone for today. 
no one answers. We should return tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes? the counter rolled out of his open hand you see a blister pack of headache medicine the man does not mind you probably need them more than he does you've just picked up some magnesium this item is stored in the bottom left corner of the screen above your character portrait use magnesium there is only one way to awake this bone idol from his slumber Roar like a hurricane. Rip the buildings from the earth. Why the yelling man? Wait, what? No, he was just sleeping. What do you want, officer? Thank God, no.
brilliant. That's the name of my employer. He doesn't sound too enthusiastic about this. How's it going? <sighs> Haven't you noticed what's going on outside? Good. Then you understand the gist of it. For one, I can get some goddamn shit I. Right to sleep, I say. Nate got it. Mazarin's got it. He's guarding the gate. I'm just getting some sleep. Or was. We are. The workers. The union. Okay. I guess there's also Everard. He's in charge of the union. He's smart. Knows how to do it. Yeah. What about it? You know, people die here every day. Someone's found in a ditch, and... If someone has decided to die on top of a tree, then how is it my concern? I can tell you this. Trouble's ahead. You heard what I said. Draw your own conclusions. That's... The lieutenant gives you a little... So Union people think he was a killer, he thinks. Even sleepy here. This doesn't help a lot, but it's something. Good work, detective. Indeed. Help yourself to some... Wait. No. The dock worker doesn't answer his head. Can I help you? Yes. Have you got it? A lot. A like what? Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. This is precinct 57. It will take just a moment. Oh. <laughs> Gottlieb. He's carelessly chewing on a piece of hard candy. Oh, it's you. Yes, there's no end. Who? You are? You lost your human visage a while back. Yes, there's no end to the misfortunes fate has seen sick. Who? You are? And you survived it. Even better. With all the damage. What else? It's hard to say if he doesn't believe you. Or doesn't care. What? You want me to do blood? You want the real? So it's political. And no, I... It's not fucking cryo act. Mm -hmm. Anything else I can help you with, officer? 57, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of steer... The door is closed. The 
bed is cold and not particularly inviting. The option to go to sleep becomes available every night after 9 p.m. The fan stands still. The switch must be broken because nothing happens. The fan stands. The lights are on. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Kim also tries not to look at the pile of tape viscera on the carpet, or the weird suitcase on the hat rack, or the potted plant. The man is finding it hard not to trip on the tape and not to send any of the bottles rolling across the floor. Where unidentifiable sludge makes it hard for him to breathe. Smells of vomit in here. He nods. No problem, officer. is closed. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere inside. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. The door does not care. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. Still no answer. Still nothing. The lieutenant, he doesn't like where this is going. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board. With the, It takes about half an hour to piece one together. Using the system you've devised. Which one? This one is the mural is true love. People call it. The graffito crew is easy to track down. The case files do not. The crew agrees to clean. The 9,000 people subjected to the mural's message. All of Lakeside. A staggering 78% of voters choose to keep it. Turns out the opposite. Did anyone ask you what you believe in, man with the smelly toilet ledger? 
What do you want to tackle next? Not much has changed. There is no arm. You hear the shower being A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. The door is indifferent to your loneliness. The world does not care. It's the ledger you found in the... It takes about half an hour. A.K.A. Leslie and Burke. A.K.A. The public indecency drunk and the property damage drunk is a cursed case. It has been passed from unsuspecting officer to unsuspecting officer for 10 years. On January 29, the unsolvable case made its way to you. Why you accepted it, it is unclear. Every officer, and indeed most civilians in general, know it's unsolvable. You were so drunk, you didn't remember what it was when you signed on. That, or you were high. Leslie will always take his pants off when he's drunk. Burke will always trash everything. It's just what they do. It is their nature. You cannot change the nature of a man. And you can't lock them away, because public indecency and small-scale property damage are not punishable by incarceration. The only way for Leslie to stop flashing his genitals to bypassers and for Burke to stop dismantling signage and rear-view mirrors would be for them to stop drinking alcohol, which in their 40s or 50s, it's hard to tell because of their distorted features, is a medical improbability on par with you ceasing to produce the expression. You would think that, but you're wrong. 
Where's the fun in exposing your genitals or breaking stuff in your own home? No, Leslie and Bert are on the corner of Main Street. Can you keep yourself off the streets? Threatening, fines, dragging them to the station. Locking them up in the hell holes they live in. Locking them up in the station. Hypnotherapy. Even trying to get the local gang of Zemiaki to take them out. The Zemiaki gave them ethanol, so Bert and Leslie would expose and rampage even harder. You tried it all. And still the complaints wouldn't stop. As they hadn't stopped for... It's plain to see from the files that you, Satellite Officer JV, and Special Consultant TH, had more important cases to attend to. You uncover cross-reference to several ongoing investigations, each brought to a standstill every time you drive down Main Street. Because there they are, on the corner of perdition. And what is Leslie doing? Good, you're learning. If the files are to be trusted, that's all there is to it. That and Burke breaking things, and the fact that they're both drunk. But then again, so are you. The case becomes considerably less comic one day, when Burke takes a swing at your ledger. He must have it confused with the property he likes to damage. But the joke's on him. You're drunk out of your mind on potent Pilsner. You slam the hardened plastic board in his... In the process, the ledger sustains damage. The compartment within, reserved for permeable documents, is jammed shut. You stop your assault on the now unconscious Burke to open it, but are unable to do so. He came at us, and at us. I think he was trying to kill Burko. While trying to kill Burko, you slowly come around. The permeable's compartment is open. You've smashed it open on poor Burke. Can't get out of his apartment, an invalid. With Burke to tend to, Leslie cuts back on the indecent exposure. Maybe he flashes his genitals to Burke. Who knows? But both drunks are off the street. The complaints stop. The unsolvable case is solved. Which is also why the officer responsible narrowly escapes a disciplinary hearing. The end. Do you want to read another one? Not much has changed in the meanwhile. A bunch of sodden papers still sags from the clipboard. is not what you end up doing. You squeeze the plastic to slide it open, but the ledger quivers in your hand as it shakes the pages rustle. This pathetic mess. The door is closed. Yes? Look at you. It's because you're a failure. They sent you to slight, Precinct 57. Just think about it for a second. You're a raging alcoholic who showed up three days late wearing piss-stained disco garb. You weren't sent here to win. I've considered it. It would be immensely ugly of them, not to mention unprofessional. But I also think it's somewhat unlikely. I checked the records. This jurisdiction dispute, Rupolis Martinez, 
reaches back to the 30s. It's as old as my station. And all this time, we can't decide who gets Martinez? I think, yes, both stations would prefer a win. Safe? No. But you are old. You've made it this far. Something has brought you through. So no, I don't think they sent you as a joke. And even if they did, they are in for a surprise. What about me? That's correct. You feel a slight... I guess you don't need glasses, then. That's because I'm half Seolite, or quarter. Mm-hmm. I don't speak a word of Seolite. No. The lieutenant nods. Good. Let's change the subject. What do you want to know? You mean like a brief? Three days ago, during that time, a security guard, they didn't identify. There's a strong prejudice against involving the RCM in what's seen as you. That's right. You mean like a brief? Three days ago, during that time, the victim had been stripped. A secure. They didn't die. There's a strong prejudice against. Okay, well, we are police officers. It is our job to. Good. This button looks new. It's probably not connected yet. Nothing happens after you ring the doorbell. They don't want to talk to you. Silence. No one answers your call. Hello again, officer. Looking for something? <laughs> oh man, oh man, that's great. Look at that guy go. I haven't seen anything that funny in a while. God damn. <laughs> Thanks for that, but no, it's not mine. He doesn't live in Martinez. We should think about calling it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. You should take care of that, then. Let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the street. We'll figure something out. Though he finds this situation frustrating, he is doing his best to not make you feel any worse than you already do.
Can I help you? Another thing. Great. I love those. Oh, yes, that door. Sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. Fine, okay, a little. But my job doesn't leave me time for. So I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals. And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. Yes. Yes, have you got it? Does that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? As a police officer, you must understand that I cannot take evidence being money. You can't stay here without money. Good luck trying to use it. All the locks have an electronic component. They have to be unlocked down here with a master key before your guest key will open the lock. Not until you bring me the money. Okay, I might have something in my motor carriage we can use when you're done here. I really didn't want to resort to this. The man is thinking. Oh, Lieutenant, we're done here. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect transport enclosure. Transport enclosure? Regular people just call it the cage. The cage at the back of the motor carriage looks rather uncomfortable. For sh I confiscated this for a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. There are spinner hubcaps, frivolous things you put on your wheels. When the wheels come to a stop, the caps keep on spinning. There's no real use for them, it's just for vanity. A couple of weeks ago, I stopped a young man for going slower than the speed of traffic. Turns out he was some coalition official's son and hi. Mm -hmm. I took them and arrested him for driving under the influence. That they are. I was going to take them into evidence, but they weren't necessary for conviction. He never asked for them back. No, no, that, that would be silly. I just... I don't know why I kept them. It doesn't matter. I couldn't put them on this MC anyway. He flashes a smile barely visible in the dark. As I said, they are useless anyway. But thank you. Yes, there's one 100 meters south of here. I think it's called Roy's Nest or something. Items that can be poured at Bird's Nest Roy's appear in your inventory under the Items tab. You can pawn these items when talking to Roy. The lieutenant nods as you take the spinners.
It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my... What can I do? His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movement of light across the walls of the shop. I haven't had any problems myself, though some of my cust... Who are your customers? You All kinds of people come through here. Locals, tra as you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. It keeps me entertained. Entertained? He might be high. If he is, on what? Okay, he definitely is high. Whatever it is, you've probably looking at his wares, talking to him. That might give you a guarded man like him wouldn't tell you if you asked out loud. I doubt it, but I can try and answer any questions you may have. I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business, bad for everyone. The corpse behind the hostel, I assume. I don't ask around the harbor. There might be some work. The pawnbroker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colors. Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. This is a pawn shop, and it did feel as if you've met before. Oh, God. The lieutenant shifts from one foot to another, alert. You... uh... You were adamant about getting rid of it, officer. Said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the Revachol citizens' militia. And I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. O he's not telling you the whole story. It seems he's trying to spare you. You weren't quiet yourself, officer. You were very distraught. You said the gun was a threat to your life and that you can't... When I said that I don't normally buy firearms, you put the gun barrel in your mouth and sort of sucked on it. Then I agreed to take it. Fifteen Rael. The lieutenant looks from you to Roy and then back to you. It's clear, this has got to be the most. Wow. There's pity there too. In case you didn't notice. It certainly does. Especially in Revachol. She didn't seem like a policeman. Although she kept referring to herself as a pig. Which was odd. I found her interest in the gun a bit... Obsessive, but I was just happy to get rid of it and of her. Truth be told, she was terrifying. Right, so let me get this right. 
You sold your sidearm, issued by the citizen's militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? Miraculously. His face does not reveal what's happening inside. You're right that she could cast aspersions on the Force. We have to find out. My apologies, officer. A needle in a haystack. There is nothing you can do about it now. You just have to hope you luck upon her somehow. Of course. Sure thing. Sure, man. Yes, we'd like to sell these hubcaps. Roy takes the hubcaps from the lieutenant. Yes, these are very, very good. Did you defraud some foreign prince for... No one was defrauded or jumped, I assure you. Of course, I meant no offense. 200 real for you, officer. Thank you. Here's the 130 real you need for your bill. Do not waste it. The windfall is a small consolation. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Oh, no. I don't like those kinds of objects. No sale. A photic path, counter-radiance network, anti-magnetism. It's darkness. That's all I know. Sell me something lighter. I'm not purchasing any more clothing at the moment. Another time, perhaps. Typical Martinez streetlight sits among assorted floor and table lamps. The light pole has been carefully cut and the wiring has been redone and attached. This would make quite a statement in your living room. Yes, officer. As you see, it's in perfect working order. It was brought to me to be altered. We are not here to investigate the theft of city property. You have to admit it's rather clever what he's done with it. 700 real. A bargain, I dare say. There's also the matter of rewiring. But the most important transformation is the light's placement among ordinary indoor fixtures, which has adjusted its morphological field. The light became suitable. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. So try to find something pretty and cool here, then use it to win her back. Yes, buy something nice, a figurine. Big men on big horses clad in lamella armor and carrying flintlocks, the kind that would mow down a light Franco-Nigerian knight. I used to be very serious about these guys. A long, long time ago. They're not all blue. These figurines also wear gold coats and caps, complemented by orange trousers. They are variously posed, wielding swords and rifles with bayonets. This is what the loyalists looked like, yes, at first. Then they wised up and got camouflage. Which one? Ah. Royalist soldiers from the time of the revolution. The uniforms are painted a bit too brightly, I suppose. This set of soldiers isn't meant to look impressive. A few have rifles, but... M You're probably talking about the revolutionaries, yeah? I think their poverty has been exaggerated for effect. 
When you place them next to the Royalists, it doesn't seem like they could possibly win. Maybe. The boom boxes on the shelf look well loved and well traveled. Chipped, dented, they stare at you with the unblink. One especially catches your eye. Deep gold and amber plastic with a big old handle on top. A classic boom box. This is you. Golden orange. A sunset suite. Just make sure it works before you buy it. Is the Harman Welsh W2. Made in Vespa. Designed in Seoul. Plays all reel-to-reel -reel formats. 2mm, 8mm, 12mm. It's even got a little radio in there. It'll set you back 12 real. If police work means playing tapes, sure. Absolutely. I've tested each one myself with recordings of speech. Found sounds and music from a variety of genres. Even though, I don't really like music. And here you are. Quality sound reproduction on the go. It'll... Can I help you? Yes, have you got it? Well? Great, thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. If you continue to stay here, I just ask that you please pay your nightly bill in advance starting tomorrow. The electronic lock to your room has been disabled till 9 p.m. tomorrow. Please pay for each night in advance starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. I'll take a room here too. Of course. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? This is the door to the room you redecorated. Just a moment. You had some questions earlier, I believe. And besides, we should discuss our progress. The air outside is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then... Where shall we begin? 
We should talk about the investigation, first and foremost. But I also remember you wanting to discuss the RCM. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Oh man, he looks so devastatingly cool with that cigarette. You mean this? This isn't cool. It's an unnecessary trial of will and analysis. Keeping the habit within the parameters he's given himself takes a lot of focus. It would be easier to simply quit. Yes, it's been a long and eventful day. Well, we inspected the victim's body, so that's good. It was not easily approachable in that state, but we did it. I would say our initial inspection was very thorough, and we have solid leads to follow up. The body is still hanging from that tree, which is unfortunate. And there's still much to do at the crime scene. He is not particularly satisfied with your progress, but he doesn't want you to feel completely discouraged. Probably out of fear that you'll just give up and keep drinking. I look forward to that. As for the interviews, we weren't able to find the union leader, Everard Clare, much less interview him. So that's on the to-do list for tomorrow. We talked to Joyce Messier, but didn't get any information from her. I have a feeling Joyce knows how dangerous the situation really is. We have to get her to talk to us. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that a standard prison 41 practice? I have a really good theory about why you're running so fast, son. Just you wait until we get up tomorrow. All right, but, and forgive me, this is just something I have to ask. If you have shoes, then why aren't you wearing them? Suit yourself, but you should probably consider wearing them anyway. They're quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Rebachol Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses in accordance with an interdepartmental schedule. The RCM's primary role is to ensure safety. We are not really supposed to play any part in the economy. Yes, although indirectly, as citizens can always request records from their local station. Officers of the RCM, we can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station closely. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. You can't. Those who don't show up become fugitives, though, and have fewer legal rights when they are eventually caught. It's about our projection. Thus far, they seem to mostly show up. As you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in the watermarks, we are permitted to use whatever force is necessary, and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. You have to supply compelling evidence for why it was necessary to use lethal force. In these cases, your partner is usually your witness. Not a good position to be in, by the way. Internal Affairs handles these cases thoroughly by cross-examining you for inconsistencies. It is hard to cover for anyone. We don't convict. We arrest and send them to coalition government courts in Kourou and La Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records, which is why the coalition government. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Revachol or the coalition government formed in the RCM. It's probably more honest, yes. Either way, the Moralinton leases us the right to keep the peace in this city, and they will take it away if we misuse it. The Moralist International are the world's largest political organization. You know who they are. They have been running this place after the revolution failed. 
There are a union of center-left and center-right parties across the real belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, EPIS, most intergovernmental organizations in the world. What do they believe in? They are Dolorians. They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence Dolores Day four centuries ago. Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. Something kind and usual. Something almost self-explanatory. Something ominous. Something even a little feminine. But in a strict manner. A historic figure? The author of the modern age? You will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism is too abstract for me. The moral intern are a fact. I try not to have opinions on facts until they change. It is more than that. There's some kind of affection in him. Yes, I did, when I was younger. In my twenties, I considered myself a moralist. A blue for- That's another light motif associated with moralism. But the years have changed that. I don't know what I believe in now. No, I believe in the RCM. That's enough for me. Do you? In fact, we would need them even if you didn't think that way. We are in what is called the twilight of international law. The laws we claim to enforce come from the EMI. Without them, we are simply vigilantes. Then you will adore Martinez. For many of these people, the Union especially, vigilantes is precisely what we are. Personally, I don't enjoy it much. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly. This soldier is the highlight of the day for me, he thinks. This little stick right here. An aerostatic passes overhead. The whiskers of its floodlights on the ground below. Kitsuragi's glasses light up as he looks to the sky. Two glowing circles. They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid, you know. It's different in land, in Jamrock and the GRIH. It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs, to the Union, to the company, not daring to come here more often. It's like I told you, this place is an orphan, fallen between the cracks. We run this city. West of the river is RCM land. It's incredibly hard. Human beings are... But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works, our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. Me too. But I wouldn't count on any drastic changes in our lifetimes. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. Still nothing. Still nothing. This door... The 
bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets feel at once coarse and clammy against your skin. The bed sags beneath your weight as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. And then sleep doesn't come. And then sleep doesn't come. Maybe it's the bed's fault. Its synthetic filling has separated into hard lumps. The pillowcase smells oddly. It barely covers your toes, stretching over your soft belly. This is your body here, intimate and warm, breathing. Under your thrumming eyelids, you see a dizzying array of colors. You won't get off this carousel quite so easily. It's a little better. Colors, scenes, and half-formed phrases still litter your mind. Part of you is still trying to solve the case, isn't it? Your breathing steadies. A great silence washes over you until your eyelids twitch in your sleep and images, images start forming. Baby, you stayed. It was the rest of it that left. Or you just stood there, with one hand on the bottle and the other on your dick, watching it go. Tell me, where are your friends? Human beings have friends, Harry boy. Where the hell are yours? No, it's gone. Three times gone and... You failed Elysium. Everything. The pale and the useless. On the surface. The out. You really drop. No, Harry. You were just talking to yourself. You'll be back in those cold snake skins in no time. Stinky boy. You're not coming back from shit, thrashing around in that high conductivity state of yours, bumping into things and acting like a clown. Who are you kidding? You're trying to what? I can't hear you. This is just a word dream now. So something is wrong. Sleep shouldn't be this bad, this dry, this unnourishing. There's something wrong with your th- Oh yes, party boy, and it's worse than the one before. Just think of the shit you saw. Here 
time to go to work in the shit factory. Good going, buddy. Oh, just a dream. You have ones like that all the time. You feel even worse this morning than you did. You mean, why are you so tired? Too tired and down to even think? It is worrying, isn't it? You can't be a detective like this. D That's not really true. Your heart has finally pumped all the speed out of your system, Buster. Time to get some more. You're too weak to say no now. Waking up is the worst part. Maybe somewhere down the line you could decline. Are you sure? Ready to live as this pathetic shell of yourself for days? Basically, a week. Let's be honest, two weeks. Maybe three. You won't make it. Half the town will be dead by... Suit yourself, slow, sad shell man. See how you do without your spark. Is closed. Still nothing. This door. Morning. Looks like we can get to work at once. The Union muscle turned up. They look rowdy. We should talk to them. I completely forgot. Uh, sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them by the looks of it. Loud and nasty, just like the manager said. One loose thread less to worry about. And one big problem to replace it. <laughs> 